Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. In this video I'm going to explain how to apply Hardy-Weinberg formula in order to solve real-life problems. And here is a problem, a 1970 study of 93 house mice in a single barn in Texas focused on the single locus, the gene for a certain enzyme with two alleles, A and A prime. The genotype frequencies found were as follows. And uh, first we have to calculate the allele frequencies. Second, how does uh, this population differ from the predictions of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? Uh, we need to show the work. And uh, question C, in this specific case, what factor or factors are most likely to be causing deviations from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? And how can you tell? So, if you think that you can solve this problem on your own, I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve a problem on your own first, try to answer each question, and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. So and here is uh, how we are going to solve this problem. First of all let me write down the Hardy-Weinberg formula. So F stands for the frequency of the three uh, genotypes that can be made by two alleles and first allele would be allele P and second allele would be allele Q and all the alleles P and Q in the gene pool would equal to one so if we combine all uh, these two alleles and these two alleles can produce three genotypes first one would be P squared plus 2pq plus q squared and all three genotypes also when we add all these frequencies also would equal to 1 and uh, according to our problem we have two alleles a and a prime in our formula a would be equivalent of the uh, allele p and Q would be equivalent of the allele A prime. So we have two alleles. These two alleles can make three genotypes in diploid organism. So P squared stands for the AA. 2PQ stands for the A and A prime. And Q squared stands for the A prime and A prime. So three genotypes. Now uh, we can uh, answer the first question, calculate the allele frequencies. And frequencies are given as follows. So uh, AA frequency is uh, 0 0.226 and uh, A prime A or A, A prime that is the same is uh, 0 0.226. 400 zero, zero, and uh, frequency of the a prime a prime is 0 0.374 and uh, as you see if we add all these three frequencies we are going to get one so how to find the frequency of the allele a and frequency of the allele a prime this is very easy. So, as you see, uh, here we have frequency of the allele P squared uh, as 0 0.226. And as for the heterozygous genotype, capital A, capital A prime, we have a frequency of the 0 0.400. So that means that half of this number are frequency of the allele that is uh, capital A and half of this number is the frequency of the A prime. So what we have basically to do we have to add half of this number here and half of this number here. So plus 0 0.200 and plus 0 0.200. So now we know that the frequency of the allele P would be 
zero point four hundred twenty six and the frequency of the allele Q would be zero point five seventy four. So when we add these two numbers we are going to get one. So so far our calculations are correct and we have uh, answered the first question. So here is the uh, frequency of the allele P and here is the frequency of the allele Q. Or we also can say frequency of the allele A and A prime. So now we can answer the second question. How does this population differ from uh, predictions of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? And this is very easy part. Uh, everything we have to do, we have to use these numbers and uh, use them in our formula here and find out if uh, uh, frequencies that we are going to get would be the same as observed. So we have to find if uh, frequencies predicted would be the same as frequencies observed. So frequency of the genotype A prime A prime would equal to Q squared as you see according to our formula and Q equals to 0 0.574 also we have to square this number and the answer is 0 0.329 this is a new frequency, so we can put this frequency here. So 0 0.329. Next, we have to find a frequency of the heterozygous genotype. So this is going to be A and A prime. That is equal to 2PQ. We know number P, we know number Q, so 2 multiplied by number P, that is 0 0.426, and multiplied by number Q, that is 0 0.574, and the answer here would be 0 0.489. So we can put it here, so predicted frequency of the heterozygous genotype would be 0 0.489 and as you see uh, observed frequency is 0 0.4 so we have deviation here and now we have to find frequency of the AA genotype so AA genotype would equal to P squared and we know number P that is 0 0.426 we have to square this number and the answer would be 0 0.181 so this is going to be frequency of the capital A capital A genotype 1 Eight, one, and as you see we have deviation also here so this is frequencies that were observed and these frequencies that were uh, calculated uh, that is predicted according to the uh, Hardy-Weinberg formula and, and if we add uh, these predicted frequencies we also going to get one or very close number to one because uh, our numbers here are rounded. So now we are ready to answer the last question. In this specific case, what factor or factors are most likely to be causing deviations from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? So in order to answer this question, everything we have to know just uh, postulates in uh, which situation Hardy-Weinberg formula works and uh, Hardy-Weinberg formula works it uh, assumes that uh, population is infinitely large there is no 
migration and uh, there is no assertive mating. There are many other factors but this is most uh, common factors and of course as you see because group of uh, mice were very small most likely factors here would be small group small sample and of course when we have such small sample and uh, mice that live in one barn and this also means that uh, most of these mice probably would be in breed what in other words from the genetic point of view we can say about inbreeding process inbreeding is constant change of the allelic frequencies until one of the alleles would be lost and in this locus we may see that all the mice would be homozygous mice can be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive this depends on the uh, fitness of genotypes but of course uh, inbreed mice cannot be heterozygous and this is all for today thank you for attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any and see you in the next video goodbye